Good afternoon. So many interested on IT security and enterprise, but it's a field that is growing and growing and growing. So my name is Massimiliano Francinelli. You can try to guess from where I'm from, from Italy. Um, at the moment, I work for the International Atomic Energy Agency. I'm the unit head of IT security systems. Previously, I was working at the International Tribunal in The Hague, in Holland. Previously, I was working the agency as a Linux expert and my my experience comes surely from software development, then more Linux administration, and then I start to be interested more and more in IT security. IT security is something that as I say I already said is growing, as a field that is growing a lot. For me it's always difficult when I have a representation because you can talk for hours about IT security. So in one hour, I try to build something like, we start from what are the problems today, and then I, 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 I want to give you something like, imagine you want to become an hacker, how do you start? How are you gonna, from where you start? What you wanna learn? So I start all my presentation with this image. I cannot see the image from here. So I love this one, because today, internet is like, really like our second life, no doubt. You go to the office, the first thing, you use a computer. You are at home, you use your PC. You have your mobile device. Many other stuff. These are your type of life. And these are, oh, I love this one. You have the Amazon, and you have the servers here, and you have the cloud, the <laughs> Google, the surf, the web sea. And you have a lot of deep web. I think I created the deep web is five times what is not deep web. And then you have whatever is continental content. There's a lot of data that are there. Somebody, I don't know, set up a WordPress machine and then say, I don't want to blog, I'm not a blogger. I leave this machine up there. It's running, it's consuming electricity, data, bandwidth. Others are gonna try to find that machine. It's a gift for them. And there are many gifts in the internet to others. I also always use this one from Gregson one of the most famous uh, security engineers, probably all of you know already this one. So somebody call at home and they say, do you really call your son something like we table and, and so on? They say, yeah, what's the problem? We lost all our records. So <laughs> they just put in a form the name of this guy and they've done a kind of civil injection and they delete all the table. <laughs> Quite simple. Then, at the moment, I'm also teaching at the Webster University. My course is Cybercrime Impact on Business. And a few days ago, every day I go there for lessons and I show some news. So what happened this week in terms of IT security? But one day I was there and I always looked to this guy. He's a guy that is a really good developer. I mean, you don't see the guy, you see the website. And I just found that this guy found a vulnerability, a civil injection, for, one, for a really famous content management system for him. And this guy said, I already provide the script if you want, just perform it, and you will be able to do whatever you want with the database. And I told my guys, guess what? I'm pretty sure tomorrow somebody's gonna use it. And this is what happened. Exactly the day after, he was posted on exploitdb.com, a famous website where you can see daily all the new exploits that you can just download and use. And the same, in the same evening, I was checking the news, and the famous VPN provider was up using that exploit. And all the people, all the customers, got an email, a fake email, saying that their accounts are, will be closed, and you will give a party to unspecified authorities. Why to the authorities? We all know the hackers use VPN. <coughs> if I have to perform an act, I'm not going to use my IP address from my ISP provider at home from my PC. At least I go for a VPN. At least is the minimum. So everybody knows this guy, the hack, the server, they were trying to scare a lot of hackers that we know they use the VPN, this VPN provider. Another interesting news is that in USA, they discovered that there are 
were 11 years old people, guys, writing <coughs> exploit, exploiting a software or whatever to, to get Bitcoins, maybe. Um, I don't know if, how much you're aware of Bitcoins. I think you are, because I saw there is a presentation about Bitcoins. Somebody was talking about Bitcoins. It's something that is uh, it's becoming a real value. Um, I was calculating a few days ago the value of Bitcoins at the moment is 1.1 billion euro. And you, you can see the trend, something that is going a lot. So why I mentioned before and not an exploit, and now I'm mentioning and the BPL, and now I'm mentioning uh, Bitcoins. Those are the three methods I was using. If I want to transfer money, I'm not going to use a, my credit card. If I want to buy a VPN connection from a VPN provider, I'm going to use a fake identity, I'm going to use Bitcoins. My identity has to be another identity. It cannot be. I cannot go with my name, Massimiliano Falcinelli with VPN, and then try to, make, to perform an act. It would be really stupid to do that. <laughs> so, numbers. When we talk about, it's deeper for me, because I don't see the picture. So, <laughs> Numbers. When we talk about cybercrime today, it's a matter of numbers. There are many people who think, oh, nothing can happen to me, I'm safe. And then what are we talking about? We are talking about few attacks per day. It's crazy. We have one million victims a day. That's the reality. Doesn't mean that you're being exploited, but they tried. One million. And you can see here from the number. So you say every day there are twice as many cybercrime victims as newborn babies. So this is quite impressive if you think of it. This is what we are talking about. And when we talk about cybercrime, I just took this, I love this one about the, I don't know how much of you knows about the Red October. It was an operation. There are many people, many they say there was FBN behind, the Russian business network behind. We don't know very well, but so it was a kind of spionage. They were trying to spy all around the world, embassy or United Nations also, where I work, and many other organizations. And you can see, it's quite impressive how, ma uh, how many places have been identified as more hacked by these people. It's an impressive number. And what is crazy with this one, that the many hacks have been discovered after months so there were people that they didn't know they had a lot of sensitive data. They were already hacked, sent to a command and control server, already indexed by somebody, and sent to somebody else. Many organizations discovered this after months. When they discovered, it was too late. And what I also like in, in, in cybercrime, in, in IT security, is that Kuzaga are really good developers and IT administrators. Some of them, they're really, really and the way they build their infrastructure is not, it was like, I don't know, a few years ago, try to work uh, still with Windows, sorry, I should not say still with uh, Windows uh, software or whatever. They were, they are, today they really build a complete and really well done IT infrastructure. So they have proxy, MS proxy, uh, fake DNS, uh, common and control service. It's amazing what they do. They give you all the API, DLL, whatever you need to build your malware, for example and to be able to contact your command and control. So I put there, so let's start to think if I'm an agent, so most probably I'm also a developer. I mean, I'm a person that likes IT and knows IT. And like all, all of us, we like to have frameworks. You don't, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You need to have a framework. And there, there is a long list here. Some of them are really famous, like the Zeus, or Zeus, I don't know how you pronounce that or the zero access, those are quite impressive IT framework. So you have the server side, the client side, the API, everything to build your infrastructure. And so here I have an example. There is a website where you, if you think that you discover it sales, common and control server, you can tell this people, I found another one, please put in, uh, in your list. And it's quite impressive, this is, you can see this daily. Uh, look how many. Those are only the ones that we discovered. There are many other hidden. So this is just a small number. But you can, you can see that all around the world, there are a lot of Zeus command and control servers ready to receive data 
or whatever. It can be a marvel, the closest scripting after that, whatever, whatever, because there are many ways to send data with common and control. And this I just took this picture because uh, the, an app zero access that is based on Zeus. This is a picture of all the infections that, that have been discovered a few months ago in USA. You can see it. It really looks like a virus. <laughs> so you have the whole country full of clients that have been hacked <coughs> and are sending data back to the Roman control I always say that today nobody is safe in security. Uh, you, we are so used to, to use things like a tiny URL, for example, such as Tarini Hate. Because you can send, prepare your cross site scripting attack and then using a tiny URL and sending an email to whoever. And with the mobile device, it's been proved that people are much, much more used to just click. There was a kind of experiment, a social experiment, where people using a laptop, they sent an email to, to the same person, and they said, open the email using your PC, and then do the same after a few days using your mobile device. Using the laptop, before clicking on the link that was in the email, he was thinking a lot. Should I open this link? Should I do something? He didn't feel really safe. He was using his PC, an email, a link. After a few days, they send the same email, probably a bit different, I don't know. Again, with a tiny URL, and this guy clicked immediately on the URL. And it was hijacked. Why? Because we are so used to just touch it, touch it, touch it, convince it. Becoming a big deal, by the way. This is another image I will show. So if I want to become an hacker, should I consider myself a real criminal? I think so, I said, because for all the things you can do in the real world, you can mainly do with cybercrime. So if you want to do a real extortion, you can go there with a the gun and point your gun and say, I want your money. You can do the same if you send an email saying, I got all your database, all your customer credit card number, now, if you want that I posted them in the internet or I or use them, you have to give me some money. At the end of the day, the same. And there are many other examples. So, this is, yeah, for me, it clearly more, many others are criminal. There are people they consider them not criminal. They are clearly are. So, and then, if I want to be a yeah. another, what I can do? I mean, I can do a lot of stuff. If I think about web server, I can do phishing, I can use it as spam or whatever. If I think about financial, I can try to get some credit card number or bank accounts. Uh, if I think about Facebook, I can use it for reputation. Imagine if there were a few days ago, somebody, no, so it was more than a few months ago, it was one year ago exactly. Uh, Twitter Obama account was hacked. I don't know if you know about this, and yeah, you know, somebody else. And then Agar, and they posted something like that there was a bomb uh, exploded on the White House. Uh, in that moment, the stock exchange dramatically went down, something like 50% in few minutes. Luckily, they were able to immediately post back and say, so get back their Twitter account and say it was, it was a fake post, everything's safe, the White House is safe. But if you see on the uh, in New York Stock Exchange, the fluctuation, 50% in one minute. So imagine how much can be, the power can have an agar when you get a Twitter account of a famous person. I'm from Italy, imagine somebody gets their pop Twitter account and post something, uh, I don't know, in case music. Good. I mean, the impact is big, it's really huge. So here yeah, I am now, so let's say I want to become an agar, I'm not so expert, so I still don't know I'm, uh, so much about SQL Map, Kali Linux, uh, SSL Sniff, all those tools that we use, I don't know, volatility. Uh, I'm just a guy that loves IT. I'm not so good, I'm not so expert, but I want to start in somehow. Okay, there is a good, good gift, it's Google hacking. If you go to Google, you find thousands, thousands of machines that you can use for your purpose. Here I have some example. Let me stop. Sorry, let me again. Let's say I want to perform. A I want to send a phishing email and try to do something. Else, okay. 
I, those are real ones, right? I just did a few days ago. So I can try to find uh, an open MySQL DB. I was able to go there and get root access. There I can use it as a command control, for example, to store all the data I'm gonna sniff all around. With the other one, I found an open proxy, so I can use it for to be anonymous when I perform my attack. On the other one, I found a way to transmit a payload using a flash movie. And with the fourth one, I was able to simply log in on the server because the cookie were open, let's say, and have an account with an email account. So just doing a bit of Google hacking, I will be able to prepare my database, prepare my payload to be sent, send it from a real account in a real server, and do it using a proxy so nobody knows that it is my IP address when I connect to the DAP, to the server, to send the email. So just doing a bit, really a bit of Google hugging, I can perform something really, let's say a good attack. I have everything I need, not much. Not much more than I need. Clearly, then, I want to, have, want to do something more sophisticated. And so normally when you start to, to learn about security, you want to read a lot and you don't want to get crazy to find all the possible, mm -hmm. possible exploits that you want to use. And here you get a bigger. One is Shodan. I don't know how many of you know Shodan. This is an amazing search engine. This is going to give you the list of all the open devices of all around the world. I tried Austria. I was amazed about that. You can find the routers, switches, Cisco. Uh, Apache web server, IAS web server, whatever you want, open. What I mean open, really open. Some of them with the admin default password. So <laughs> it's going to tell you there is a Cisco router, it's sitting there, that's the hack address, you can just log in as root. <laughs> you find an Apache web server configured with root root or root password. Amazing. You find thousands, millions. I'm, I'm not kidding. Today is a matter of number. Who is fault? Nobody somehow. I mean, some comp somebody just, you know, they don't know, they don't have much money for security. So they hire an IT administrator, it's a small company, they don't know so well IT, they say we need a web server, we need three, four, we And they, I don't know, they just ask a simple consultant to do it, this guy get two, three thousand euro left, leaves and that's it. He forgets to change the root password. <laughs> now it's over. But what is really amazing about this one is that you find a lot of other type of equipment. You find webcam, you find whatever equipment. And once I was even able to find a controller for water pipes. I'm not gonna say which one because I sent them an email and say, do you understand you have a big problem? It's a big city where they were just posting here the access to the water pipe control for all the city. I was able to say, close this pipe. Stop to give water to this district. I was amazed about that. I sent the email and said, I'm not an hacker, I'm an ethical hacker, I consider myself. I think you have a problem. The day after, clearly, they, they have done something. Another one I really like a lot is this one, <coughs> Nerdy Data. This one, if you go to, let's say, to, uh, where is the other? <laughs> okay, you go to exploitdb.com, for example. And you find that there is a, I don't know, WordPress 2.5.64 uh, at that particular vulnerability. Then you go here and you just say, give me all the machines that have the specific WordPress. And it's going to give you thousands of them. If it's a zero day attack, so it's, what does it mean, zero day? It's not been patched. WordPress still didn't release the patch. Theoretically, you can hack all of them in one shot today. Then you don't need to do it manually. You run your backtrack machine or your Kali Linux machine, and you have all the tools to say, that's the list of servers, I call it them. Tell me how much, you know, how many we have success, 10%, we talk about 1,000, it's a good number. Going ahead. If I'm really, really lazy as an hacker, I go to a famous website that is Facebook. I'm pretty sure all of you know this one. You do that for everything. I'm sure you want to hack. No, you want to hack. You need a key for your Windows, Microsoft, whatever you need, and you go there and find it. This is every use by hackers. Whenever they hack something, most of them they post here. 
Why? Because it's anonymous, and because it's quick, and because you can decide that you post a pay, you can post a, a post only for a few hours, and you know that your counterparts all around the world are going to check exactly this being from 5 to 6 in the afternoon, then you will take it out. If you go there, you can try your own. You go there, you just say hack by hack, hackers, and you find a lot of information, really a lot. Going back to Shodan, this was as a news that I found two days ago. So there was a, imagine a family after dinner, the daughter goes to sleep, and then they hear some noise from the room. So what's going on there? She should sleep now. And then they realized that the voice was coming from a baby monitor. And, and this guy has been arrested. FBI found him and has been arrested. This guy was trying to wake up the girl, to, to the baby, you know, the girl, to do something, I don't know, something like sexual expression. So imagine about the powerful of this showdown. You go there, you can find an open baby monitor, log in, and, and they said that they went, when they went to the room, <coughs> the baby monitor was moving. So this person was able to hear, to walk, to talk, and to move the baby monitor. Why I, I took this example? I say again, it's our second world internet. And should, should, I don't know, sometimes people say, are you scared about internet? Now you know you work in IT security. So how can you use your machine when you know that all those things can happen? My answer is always that I simply don't use them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I love IT, I love technology, but I'm really careful to use a cloud system to store my sensitive data. It's not because I don't trust them. I'm not saying bad things about whoever it is, Amazon or Microsoft or whatever. That's not my issue, but I prefer to have my sensitive data encrypted in my stupid encrypted USB. At least they are with me and they're encrypted. No, it's not. That is never security, but it's something. Now, this is something I really like. So I say again, you want to become an hacker, you start to do a bit of Google hugging, then you discover those exploited bees, Shodan, and whatever. But there, I'm asking myself, as a person that is becoming an hacker, why I don't feel bad? I'm not a bad boy. I don't feel bad. I'm doing, I don't know, I'm creating a big issue uh, for the stock exchange, but I don't feel bad. It's not like if I went there with a gun, and then I had the young policeman around me, and then got arrested, and after 10 years, I'm out of the jail and think, oh, I was a really bad boy. No, I feel good. It's OK. No problem. Then I go out to have a beer with my girlfriend. OK. I love this one. On the, I don't know if you can see much. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Around the 70s, they have done an experiment. So there was a guy that was, wanted to commit suicide. And they said, go at the seventh floor. We are here in the plaza. It's black. It's dark. Let's see what the other say. And everybody will say, do it, do it. Why? Then they've done again the same experiment. And they went close to this guy. He, he was trying to commit suicide. And they would say, no, don't do it. Why you should do it? It's your life. So the distance, they prove that if you are really distant from the person having a problem, you don't care much. Or you even say you are curious. You want to see this guy having trouble. If you are really close, it's also you. I mean, you see that because it's close to you, you say, don't do it. It's our life. And this is what hackers feel. You are in a stack bar coffee. You are connected to an open wireless. You are connected to Tor networks, to your open VPN that is uh, touching you in South America. And then from there, you jump to, I don't know, Romania. You have a big distance from you and the person you are attacking. You don't feel so bad. This is an example. This is a really good one. Hardware we have started since ever from the beginning of it. He decided to call itself Homeless Hacker. This guy was really good because he was really acting anonymously. So he was always going to, I don't know, internet cafe, uh, open wireless, never use his nickname, never using his real name. He was really conscious that he has to hide his identity. Otherwise, somebody one day is going to call him. 
he made, when they were able to find him, after 15 months of investigation, one day that he decided to use his personal account to register himself to something official. And then they start to cross what he was asking on this forum, is that his identity, had identity, that they were able to identify from which district he was working. After 15 months, they were able, finally able to say, this guy normally used this internet cafe on Monday, or used this uh, home and wireless on Tuesday, or whatever. So he made a big mistakes. And believe me, there was another case a few days ago. Uh, there were other two famous that being caught, because they felt that they were so good in IP that they start to use not encrypted forum, for example. They were using their nickname. They were, they were not encrypted their email. So they start to send out email, offending email, using their nickname. And FBI was able finally to discover a few IP addresses using some location, and finally to spot and to narrow down the research. But those guys that were arrested, they were arrested two weeks ago. The FBI were looking for, was looking for them, I don't know, six, five years. The first time they start to send something unclear, let's say, they're being caught. So what is the message? If I'm a good hacker, I don't do this. I have a fake identity, I use encryption. I'm the best in security. I'm not the last one. I'm the best. I know what is encryption. I know what is VPN. I know what is anonymous. I know what is a proxy. I know everything. Talking too much, how much time we have? Thanks. <coughs> so, that's another one from a famous hacker. Let's say, even before you start, let's say this business, let's put it like this, even before you start to be an hacker, the first thing you do, you build your fake identity. Nobody should know anything. You have to invent your name, you have to have a Facebook account, a Gmail account, and you build other fake identities, and you send him in between, and you, you look as a real person, but you don't exist. And you buy your VPN, as I said before, with Bitcoins, you, use, uh, you never use your internet home connection. Uh, you always, the first thing you say, everything you do, first you do talk. I hope you know what is Tor. The Tor Networks is a way from which you have a, you, you never reveal your IP address. You go through different nodes with a really complex and complicated uh, encryption system. And then when you connect to internet, you go from what is called an exit point. And it's really difficult from the exit point going back to discover which one was the entry point. So you say, whatever you do, you use an open wireless, you use good VPN, but before you go to Tor so that you are completely anonymous. Really difficult even for NSA to find you. They still have many problems with that. And then he say, you never reveal to the other people that are around you that you are a, another. Why you should do that? If I want to rob, uh, rob the bank, I'm not going around to my friends. You know what I was thinking? This next Friday, I'm going to rob the bank. <laughs> Why you should do that? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to steal a car. You know, I need a car. I'm going to steal a car. Famous, the famous hackers, they don't reveal their identity. It's really difficult to find them, and they're good. They know what they do, and they do it so well. Sometimes when we discover attacks, you know, we, in our environment, and Sasha is here with me, works with me, knows, we, 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 sometimes we are amazed about what they do. Sometimes not. Sometimes we realize that there are people are just trying to do something nasty, but they really don't know what they do. But some of them, you realize from the way they, they even built a, simple malware, what they do. There are malwares today that they use encryption, they change the common and control IP address in use continuously, uh, they have a kind of mechanism to auto-update. I think they were auto-updating their malware much, much long before the Microsoft was <laughs> giving you the auto-update. So that the, if they know if the antivirus discovered the malware, yes, it's going to change something so that the signature is not valid anymore. It changed the name of the XE, the name of the DLL, runs again, uh, connected with new IP address. It's amazing what they do. Then, I think this example, doesn't matter if I mention Iran here, it's not nothing political, and just uh, something that happened three, three, three weeks ago, 10 days ago, something like this. Why I should use anonymity? There is a connection of many persons that have been killed 
on these regions, basically. And all of them are IP security experts. So this people have been killed. This people have been killed. We don't know by whom. But what we know, surely that they know a lot about IP security. So that means that probably they have on their head some really sensitive information. So why you should be anonymous? For many reasons. Not only if you are an hacker, also if you try to fight against them, you should never give your identity. I'm not going to do a Tor network, try to be in a chat with an hacker, because this is the way it works. Eh? If you want to buy today Zeus, they have a website in Tor, you connect, you go there, you find the website, they see how much it costs. It doesn't cost much. The, the basic version is something like seven, seven, $700, yeah? And then what you do? You have to start to communicate with them. Those are hackers. It's not people say, oh, yes, our bank account is back Austria number. No. <laughs> Clearly, bitcoins. So, yeah. And but when you start the chat with them, they try to discover if you are you know, somebody from FBI. And they have a lot of tricks to do that. They have particular hashes that they use. You know, if you, if you don't know those hashes, during the discussion, you know, you get the hash, a particular word, if you don't reply correctly to that particular hash, you don't know. You are not the person that is able to go to others. You are just trying to. They don't trust you. They just close the connection. Goodbye. They know that, and, and many people have always ask me, okay, but how can you find them if you want to buy the product and you don't know which hashes you should use? I always give an example of Mafia. If you want to become part of Mafia, it's not that you knock the door of famous Mafias. Yeah. No, no. Sorry, I would like to be part of your family. It's okay? Oh, yes, please. So much for you. How many guns do you need? They know if you really want to be in touch with them, you have to discover their world. You have to study. You have to know what you're talking about. And they know. I had cases where I was in chat with some of them. I was amazed. They checked in, They understood immediately that I was there just to, trying to chat and to discover something about them. They start to ask me stupid things, and after a while, I go back. No, you're gonna talk to me. You don't know. You are not here really to buy our new malware, our new bomb net system. No, no, you're just trying to find me. I don't need it. They're really good in terms of business. So, so as I said before, there are many ways. Those are just few examples. But if somebody wants to become an hacker, the first thing he does, he use those type of systems. So, Tor, I already mentioned that, Tor Cloud, OpenVPN, VPN Book, and John Doe. This is a kind of Tor networks. I, I like it a lot. Quite simple, you just download the, the client, you install it, and, and they, they give you their version of the browser. Normally it's a Firefox, really, let's say, clean, without JavaScript, without Flash Player. I mean, if you are an agger, you don't need this when you're browsing on your own to find vulnerabilities. If you want to use your scan, you don't need to have a flash player in your browser. And you always need a fake IP address, <coughs> and that's it. And how do that image that, okay, I'm able, uh, now I'm good, I became a good hacker, how do I make my money? There are thousands of ways. I think this example, this happened a few years ago here in Austria. I remember Austria. I don't know if you are aware of that, but many customers received an email from Bank Austria. There was a man in the middle of that. No, nobody? Okay. Doesn't matter. Uh, so mainly what they were doing, they were able to get all the customers email and then to send the phishing email and send uh, you should change your PIN now. Not as much better you get a PIN on your mobile, even if it's not so safe. We have, we have cases of others able to use the pin from the mobile using color channels. So I send you the attack. I study you as a person, as a possible, let's say, victim. And I know that normally you log in from that machine. I know that after that you get your pin. Then you log in, you use your pin, and you make your payment. There was an act made on an Android, an Android mobile device, so Android was the, was the target, where this hacker was able to delay the SMS, the text sent to the, to the phone, 
of something like five minutes, three minutes, exactly three minutes. So we really modify the Android in somehow and say, whenever this guy receives a text, you send it to me, and after three minutes, you send it to him. He was able to act something like 600, 700 person. Huh? So this, those people, they were using PIN to make payment. They were, you know, do you know? Clearly, this guy already got their cooking somehow, so they were able to log in on the same bank portal. So in the you log in on the bank portal, you have the same, and you feel safe because you have your PIN, you make your payment, and you wait for the PIN. This guy was receiving the PIN before you three minutes, quickly make a payment some, somewhere else, delete the payment from the history, and then you were receiving the PIN, the same one. You were gonna try, and say, this pin has been already used, or it's wrong. Something's wrong with the pin. Most of the person, that they, they, they found that most of them, they will simply say, I probably made a mistake, or probably, oh, I'm confused, probably this one I received last time, let me do another one. And they will ask another pin and make the payment. So it was smart, this guy, it was make only one payment, not three, four, five in a row. Otherwise, then you start to say, wait, five times the pin wrong? Mm. So he was using what is called cover channels. You are trying to separate the data, something is here, something is here, I'm the only one that can correlate, it's not true. He was able to do the same. There was something seen, I'm not really like this, in this case they would just say, change your pin, and then they would send all the new pins to the company. Viagra spam. Many people that always ask me, <coughs> many always ask me, is it real money, is it real money? You cannot imagine. They send millions of emails every day. Most of them are, caught by spam, assassin, and say, okay, this is spam, don't send it to the, to the user. Um, we are all skilled, we know IT, we see the email, we get it, we simply delete the email. There are still, still, hundreds of thousands of persons that click on the link, and that's, in some ways, okay. But there are many of them that really buy the value account, because it's not expensive. Why should not? No, they often be in the same pill, it normally costs 20 euro for five euro. Why should I buy it? No, no, this internet that is over. They get millions every day, millions. Another one, the zero access button. I don't know how much you know about Bitcoins. Bitcoins has this mechanism for which every transaction is correlated to a specific cash and what it's really unique in Bitcoins that every time there is a transaction, all the clients of Bitcoins know about that transaction. To prepare this transaction, you need a really powerful machine that produce them continuously. Every time you produce, I don't remember exactly the number, let's say 50 million of ashes, you get some Bitcoins, something like five Bitcoins. It's quite good money, yeah, because now the Bitcoins is something like 92 euros, so you get 500 euros. Others, because I'm good developer, say, why should I spend my time and my machine and buy a server like this to produce ashes when I can use machine of somebody else? We are finding many, many big servers, big machine, machine with a lot of RAM and whatever. It's not really the RAM because they use the, the, the graphic card the memory. So machines that are really mostly used for graphic card, that have been hacked with a zero access to produce ashes, and then when they, they get the number of bitcoins, ashes, sorry, the number of ashes, then they send the money directly to the bitcoin account of the hardware. It's great, you make money without do really zero, nothing. But then I have another problem. Okay, this is simple. I have bitcoins account, somebody send the bitcoins to my account, fine. But there are other cases, if I hack a credit card number, then I want somebody to go to an ATM machine, give the money back to me. Someone have to get the money back. The argument is not so stupid to, the last case we are told, it was a case in USA, it was 130 million debt cards. 130 million, those are the numbers today. Imagine this guy cannot just clone all of them, not with the stupid machine that you just sweep them, and they call, no, it, it, it. And then they get loaned with the number. So what they do? They find news. They said, you, I give you everything. I give you the debt card, already loaded, you have just to go to an ATM, you get the money, and you send it back to me. How? Two methods. Western Union, Bitcoins. That's it. There are other methods, but mainly Western Union and Bitcoins. So they say you go there, you take 2,000 euro, 10% is for you, 200 dollars, 
the rest we send it to this account in Western Union or in Bitcoins, to this Bitcoin account. So how do they find them? Same methods. Sometimes they simply put everything in a forum. Really is explicit. We are looking for mutes. If you know what this mule is, in Agi, you just reply to the email. They put their email, a yellow email, Gmail. We are looking for mutes. Send an email saying, I want to do it for you. They send me another email. Tell me where I can send the, the debt card. I'm going to send you, I don't know, how many debt cards you want? 20. Okay, send it to you. How do they send it? Using old fake system. So they, they register to DHL, for example, with a fake identity. They pay also there with fake money. Everything is fake. So they are, they are no risking and they send it to you. You take this 10, you go, you take 2,000 euro, you send 1,900 back to the other. This is the way. But sometimes, they, as I said before, they, they are becoming really desperate. And every time I, I take pictures about the, the infrastructure, I, I'm always amazed about them. Because in IT we do the same, no? We have our infrastructure, we start to say, we need VLANs, we need DMZ. We need proxy, reverse proxy, email, uh, email gateway, email router. No, you, you set up your environment in a way that the communication can flow, but at the same time you are protected. They do the same. When they think about their infrastructure, most of the time it's something complex. And it's a combination of different tools. In this case, we have black holes, smoke loader. These are components of the bullet. And then you have the zero access model. And here you have the connection to the morning unit to send it directly to their accounts. So it's really an infrastructure. They, they are good IT administrators in some And then what? what? <coughs> Clearly, often, this, in this slide, I'm trying, in this speech, I'm just trying to explain again how it works. So we have the hacker, we have the news, they go, they get the money, and they send it back to the hacker. That's the union bitcoins. This is a, a news that was a few months ago. They had a big issue in the USA where, where the employment was going really, really down. I guess they were looking for these people that they were losing their job. Quite easy to fish them. And you know, when, when today you get email like, some of them are listing, finishing email saying, uh, you can work from home, you can get up to 6,000 euro per day. All of us normally will laugh. But it's a noise, true. There are many, many of them are real ones. If you try to reply to one of the emails, most of the time, you get your login account in a stupid uh, web server to perform some actions. And guess what? Most of the time, after a few days, you receive a big bunch of money in your account. The average is 7,000, 8,000. Why do they do that? Same mechanism. You send you the money and with stupid things like, I, don't know, I think you saw some of those emails. I mean, at the moment I'm in Africa, but I have to, you know, I have to pay this customer in USA. I cannot do it because of different laws. So I ask you to do it. You can see I'm a real person. You got my money in your bank account. Why well, you should not trust me? So give me a favor, go to the bank. The money is now there. You get all the money, uh, take 20% for you, and send me back the rest of the money. This is a really, really, <laughs> smart system in some way. Because the problem with banks is that when I transfer money in an electronic way, the money is already from a bank to another one, but the check normally takes at least two days. So that's why you say that the money is not being really transferred. No? When somebody sends you the money, the money is not really there. That's been sent, but then they have all their check for many reasons. So what they do is, I fill an account, let's say, with 10,000 euro, I send 10,000 euro to you, I send you the email, I say, go now to the bank, because there are many banks, then they allow you to take the money anyway, even if the check has not been done. You go there, you are a customer, they know you, say, can I take those 10,000 euro? Okay. So you go there, you take the 10,000, as soon as, as soon as you take those money, they go to the sender bank, and they withdraw the transfer. The other bank needs at least two, three days to, re to get to know that the money is not really there. So who, who ge guess who they're going to search for? They're going to find for you. They're going to look for you. They come to you and say, yes, then you took 10,000 euros. You have 
to put it back because we saw the transfer, but the money was not there. But you already sent the 200 euro, let's say, to the retailer. So this guy, in a really smart way, got 200, 200 euro just using 10,000 euros that are not really there. And that's the mechanism of this. So there was a period where, this is a true story, this woman, man, I don't remember, Christine, the woman, he was without job. He got dizzy and said, why, why should not try? I'm without job, without money, let me try. He got, after a few weeks, 98,000 euros, a big amount of money. Okay, from a France to a Ukrainian bank. Uh, and then, same mechanism. They said, you can keep 1,900 1, with you, the rest you send it to us. She was really in trouble. Because the bank went back to her and said, you, we own you. We, you have to give us back $100,000. And this girl was already without money. This is just an example. There are many, many of them. <coughs> so I say again, if you are an IT guy, if you are, you are an expert, you don't, you don't, you don't get these shadows. You delete them immediately. You even don't read them. Please, don't even don't read them. Because if you by mistake you click on a link, probably you get something. To be malware, to be spider, thousands of them. So, I think I have my last two slides. And why I have those two slides? Because I saw that here at the Black Fest, you are mainly talking about mobile devices. And therefore, I was feeling like I'm talking about IT security, servers, malware, but they are really much more interested on mobile. But what I really think is my personal opinion a mobile device today is a PC, it's a computer. It's not anymore. No, we all know. I don't need to explain you this. But come on, we have SDK, we have Android, or how we have 7 now, whatever. It's a mobile. It's a PC. It's not anymore a mobile. And as I said before, in some of this, we go, this is considered much more risky than PC. For the reason I said before, we are used to just click, touch, go, and we feel safe. They interviewed many, many people that have a mobile device, and they say, do you feel safer? when you use a PC or a mobile device. And all of them say mobile device. There are still many, many words that they don't know IT. That they think it is still a mobile. Just now, what you can do is simply, you deal the number, you go to the birds. They don't realize they're going to Facebook, they do back transfer, they store some data PDF there. They do, you, you use it as a PC. And another issue for which I think that still, this can be really, really advanced, but at the end of the day, we will store the data somewhere else. The data will still reside in a server, in a cloud, whatever you want it's going to be. But at the end of the day, you're not going to store 300 terabyte data here. I will probably, in 10 years, 20 years, the internet changed so much in the last 10 years. I don't know what's going to happen in 10 years. But most of the data still in the server side. Facebook is written PHP. PHP has been discovered four weeks ago. First of all, 80% of the web server are PHP based in the world, the most famous ones. It's open source, it's free, there is a big community behind, a lot of things you find for them, a lot of frameworks. It's been discovered that the, the, the super global variables, the one that you use daily for when you code in PHP, are really, really vulnerable. There was an agar able to, you will not see much very well the screen, but to hack really simply a PHP web server and take out all the global variables and try and able to modify them. We already know they're patching it, they're working on that. But what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say is that imagine if you have 80% of all the web server all around the world, so we are talking about millions, and then you get a vulnerability in PHP, you'll see that millions of servers are vulnerable. One plus one equal two. So, and Kaspersky, the owner of Kaspersky, more probably the best anti virus in the world, in my opinion. Uh, he said that nobody is really safe, okay? He, said, he, he really thinks that things are going so wrong. And here, look, it was, this is from Kaspersky, it's not me. He simply said that it's been already proved that cyber criminals that work on building things for mobile devices are already earning between 1,000 and 5,000 
dollar per day. Per day. The numbers in, in IT security today are huge. I can tell you from my experience that the, the, let's say that the hacking world in mobile devices is not so well uh, not so well advanced like on PC, but this is normal. When we talk about Microsoft, no, it's so many years we have Microsoft machine. We have a, we know how they code, we know what is the the, the key engine and the, the DLL and the API and whatever. I mean it's so famous, it's so well known that clearly there is a lot of experience also from the cyber camera side. But one day it's gonna be the same here. It's been already proved that most of the malware that have been built for Microsoft machine, now hackers are testing for Android. This has been proved. We already found many malware on Android machine, really simple ones, they cannot really harm you so much. But it's clear that they took the code that they were using for Microsoft and they're trying to rebuild it to be used in an Android machine. iOS, something different. Apple, we all know, is a bit close, is a bit more protected. The reality is that in Apple, you cannot simply, I mean, you can you break your machine. But if you can do rooting in an Android machine, I don't see why you should do it anyway. You should never do it. If you root your Android machine, you're giving a big gift to others. As soon as they get you, they can never do whatever they want, like you can do in your own, as a root. In Android, you can only download apps from their shop, let's say, no? from, the, from their market. So that's, it, it saves them a lot, because whenever you, you have a, an Xcode uh, account, you send the application, they test the application. They don't, you don't send the code, you send the binary clearly. But they really see how much you see. And you can only download from there. This is the big difference with Android, where if you want, you can install whichever application you want. Not, not always, but in general. So I say again, things are, are changing. This for me today are PC. The data are still reside, they still reside in a server or somewhere else. And so I have some more big expert thoughts on that field. This is quite new. So here yeah, I just took a stupid example. This is our Android, an application in Android, that by default asks you to give access to your SMS. So when you install it, it even doesn't, by default, to check, give me access to your SMS. Now, if you do that, there was a guy, a famous hacker, that found that this application was given by default access to the SMS, and wrote a stupid, really stupid hack to get SMS from all the machine that he was able to work. He built a common control server, he was getting text, he showed that eh, to the Platia person. So look, I can see he was able to hack the Android of somebody and he was reading his text. So why do you say this to your purpose? Okay, be nice. iOS 7, this is that uh, we have the new version. We know that there is this famous group of people, here the third, that they're investigating, they still didn't find much. But who knows? It's really secure, nothing is really secure. And this is another news I was reading a few days ago, I was surprised about that. Because I check on my, on my Android, I say, oh sure, that is better I check. It looks like when you back up your Wi-Fi to, to the cloud, so that then if you know, if the machine breaks and you wanna revert back on your configuration. It looks like the send there. I don't know if it's true, but this is what I, re I read. I was surprised. In clear, the, wi the name of your Wi-Fi and your password. Come on, this is for me unacceptable. I mean, they are the best in the world, whatever you want, they're really secure. But what if an hacker simply hack that server and gets all the Wi-Fi with all the passwords? And what if it then is gonna post those in the internet and say, in Vienna, okay, we have a, Marcinelli, <laughs> wireless one, <laughs> password <laughs> Massimiliano. <laughs> uh, and then the fingerprint. There is a big diatribe now at the moment. No? There, are, there is Anonymous that is posting a lot of, a lot of videos complaining and saying that, and, uh, that they are trying to get our fingerprint. It's true, it's not true, I don't know. What is true is that, this is another example of, of how Internet is becoming our life. Because now with a, with a mobile device, they, you, you even send your fingerprint. And 
fingerprint this ID unique yes. is you. Now, how many, how many things you can do with a fingerprint? If I, I click, I send something, they get my fingerprint, and they get the ID of my device, and they want to try to track where I go. I can go in another place tomorrow in Italy. I click again, and I know, oh, it's not anymore in Vienna, this guy. He's in Italy. Now, I don't want to talk politics here. It's not my goal. But what I'm trying to say is that we, we send our fingerprint. We send our sensitive data. We do our bank transfer. <coughs> it's another life. It's our life. We can live, we can all live without. It's good that we can all live without. But hackers, they know this much better than us. I can tell you that when I was working in Italy once, we got the really, really famous one because we had a big issue. We didn't know how to fix it. I was amazed about this guy. What he was able to explain us. He was feeling like babies. But he was saying, why did you go figure these things like this? Look what I did. Why you done this? Look what I did. I was like, he was a really good expert. He opened my mind. So I say again, not real security. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it a bit. <laughs> did you? Thank you.